Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dowrin, and today we'll be testing out Slice and Dice in its full glory and if it's viable for Outrogue, in particular for PvP. What I did is I ran through only a 2 BGs, but it took me only 2 Battlegrounds to decide whether I think Slice and Dice will be viable or not. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and wait until the end where I do give you guys my final, authentic and the most objective opinion that I have of Slice and Dice past all the gameplay footage. But I do have some commentary of while I'm doing the BGs discussing Slice and Dice and what I truly think about it once I'm in there. I tried two different builds and I actually came up with probably one of the most viable builds for Slice and Dice. But in the end, please do stick around to the end of the video to hear my final thoughts on the talent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I know a lot of you were waiting for a video of this one because a lot of you guys ask me on a regular basis if Slice and Dice is viable and used to ask me way back in the day when I was just hanging out on PTR if Slice and Dice will be viable once the new patch releases. So hope you guys enjoy I'll see all of you at the end of the video. Okay this is my first BG I have to go to the bathroom but it's actually better for your concentration that if you really need to go take a piss and play in a game you'll actually pay attention more because you're more alert and uncomfortable but we'll just give this a try. I decided to go maneuverability because it will be a moment where I'm using slice and dice and I'm like slowed. I'm just gonna in the back of my head just be blaming like I could have had sprint if I weren't slice and dice because I'd have cool damage reduction. I wonder if my burst will feel any different. I'm definitely supposed to feel weaker. It's supposed to but we'll see. Daneb, oh, my friend Daneb. Oh, Daneb to you my friend. Just go through the cooldowns. Yep, a lot of uh, a lot of magical effects coming out in just a little bit. Okay, that was a thing. I feel like I took a little bit too much damage. I do have Nemesis. Wait, does that mean he has Nemesis on me even after he's dead? <sighs> That's scary as hell, dude. Oh my god. I'm just gonna play this build for a little bit. I might just have to go Vigor to make this build a bit more viable, because I feel like I'll just need the energy regen, like the constant energy regen. To make this work to really feel different i don't know if i should go quick draw sword master either i might play around with it i am thinking right now deeper strat definitely gotta swap out of it i mean i guess my damage isn't really that much different i'm not getting like the crits i'm not getting the cooldown reduction i guess i am having a little bit easier time with energy management because i always have 50 percent energy regen increase it's not quite the 25 from true uh buried treasure but the fact that it's constantly there i guess i can play around with that I do lose cooldown reduction, which sucks ass. I really hate it. Well, good to know the druids are self-sufficient. They don't need anybody to heal them. There they are. They are strong independent druids. Normally, I eat druids for breakfast. Like, restoration druids are not this difficult for me. But this is just insanity. This right here, right now, is actually insanity. Oh my god, look at this auto attack damage. So powerful, right? Let me just hit this guy. Wow, what powerful auto attack damage we have here. Oh wow, this, this auto attack speed. Look at that. Look at that, boys. Oh, let me go buff it. Yeah, it tricks the trade. Oh my goodness. Like, who thought Sli- Why did people think Slicing was gonna be good? My auto attacks hit on average 10k. Uh, that's about, what, every second or so? Every half a second, maybe? Okay, let me just- Let me just try it my hardest. Let me just get 20 stacks of haste, right? Let me just do my very hardest here. 20 stacks of haste. Let's go. 20, 20, 20 shades of doubt. Let's do this. Okay, let's get a uh, just a finisher off of the druid. Let's go. Let's sit on the priest. Let's sit on the priest because that'll be a good idea. That damage though. Do you see that six k? Wow, so much damage, you guys. That's a that's a lot. Is that is that what people wanted to see when they were like slicing this is gonna solve our problems? No, <laughs> fam, that was atrocious. That was just so, uh, that was just, oh, uh, that was, that was actually painful to play. That was just like, the whole time you're playing and you're like, everybody on the internet's saying this is gonna be amazing, everybody really wants for this to be amazing, I gotta, I gotta give this a solid try, and the whole time it's just like, this is such a bad idea in the back of my head. For some reason, I feel that Blizzard likes to just give me same BGs over and over. I literally queued a whole another battleground, Twin Peaks. Uh, okay, my mount is gone. I decided to change this up a bit. Uh, I did some PvE style testing for the uh, the build with Slice and Dice rolled around it. 
I did go for Vigor because I'll have more energy to work with. Slice and Dice gives me more energy to get back, so more energy to start off with. I felt Swordmaster would be redundant because I'll be able to get more slices with Vigor available, so I felt Quick Draw would actually increase my DPS. One thing this build is definitely lacking is damage increase. Maybe hopefully get a few solid uh, hits here and there with maybe like the blunderbuss when I'm going for the extra DPS on that. Wow, they got all the healers in the world, don't they? Oh, that's annoying. That's going to be a lot of healers to deal with. Because look how many slice and dices I can get back to back. And then the blunderbuss, that's where the damage really comes from. Okay, that bubble is down. Oh my god, the damage. Who is this monster in here that's pumping all these deeps? Not me, that's for sure. This does feel a little bit better in terms of how many slice and dice you can get back to back. So this does feel kind of good in terms of uh, playstyle and PvP. Because it does feel like whenever I do have pistol shot, it's a bit extra damage to you know add into the many saber slashes that I'm spamming anyway. Plus we also have a team that has an out another out the road Geo right here. Shout out to the guy that's rolling the good old build, true uh, what is it, true bearing and sharp buff and everything like that. Okay, while I'm here plebbing around with the slice and dice shenanigans. Ooh, picked up the flag. Top defender. Whatever the hell that means. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this build. I mean, I guess you have this weird consistency, but you definitely do lose the components that increase your DPS when it comes to slice and dice. I mean, you have consistency, right? Whenever you need combo points or energy, you don't ever have any issues of getting it. But, like, you run through, like... To go Vigor, so you have this consistency, you give up the damage of your possible run-throughs, you don't really gain much but attack speed, and you can make your uh, between the eyes. Oh no, yeah, be, yeah no, Blunder Bust would normally be, so Pistol Shots and Blunder Busses hit a, little bit, hit a little bit harder on a proc chance, so you're still like relying on RNG. I mean, I guess I could have gotten Killing Spree, but like Killing Spree, even though that got buffed, I feel like it's just every two minutes with no cooldown reduction, that's gonna just be... The mo one of the most painful things that I've ever seen in my life. Look at all these hits. I guess there's some consistency from them to be derived, but it doesn't feel as powerful. Yeah, this doesn't feel quite as powerful. Not nearly as powerful as the other build, the OG build. Eventually I got that warrior. Eventually. <laughs> but it took me a good while just to get anywhere close to that. I mean, I guess that was okay. It just doesn't have that extra oomph. It doesn't have that nice touch for an outlaw rogue. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get anything done. Or at least I'm here by myself now, so I'm not gonna get anything done. Oh, Feral, no thank you. So this is the damage I can do against the Feral. But then again, he's kind of feeding into my common points, so it's not really like... It's just all him. He's not there just soloing me like this. Look at this. Okay, you're expecting me to, you're expecting me to believe that this is the damage. I even saw 800 damage. 800. You're expecting me to believe that that kind of auto attack damage is going to be enough to make this build viable? You're kidding me, right? You're kidding me, this pet was actually doing more damage than I was in my auto attacks. Like, Slice and Dice is not that great, and then what it brings is attack speed, which helps you, what? Not your, not your normal ability, not your normal abilities, but instead, rather, your, uh, other abilities. The auto attacks. Oh my god, that Outlaw Rogue just destroyed him, holy shit. This is why you play Roll the Bones, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that Shark buff, he got an auto attack speed, like, he was done. He was set for life. He, look at that. He's got good, still good little buffs, and I'm. Oh, well, he's he can stay in there. I'm piecing out because I know I'm useless. That is the difference between a rogue that's playing slice nice and rogue that's playing whatever else. <laughs> that guy probably dealt the most amounts of damage just now. Let me see. That run through hit the guy for 663k. Like, are you kidding me? He just destroyed him. That between the eyes as well. What did I do? I got a. I got a uh, ambush in there and a 377k uh, run through by complete accident. I mean, if you're just trying to figure out which one is ultimately the better build, like I feel the answer is very obvious, and I don't understand why people want uh, want anyone argue. The crown, keep your
the ground. You have to keep, keep your Look at that, that's more run throughs. I have to go bigger because this build sucks. This is where you truly ultimately feel useless is when you have this other rogue that's actually doing the damages and then here you are just like you're the third party that's uh, that's doing absolutely nothing Make your way through the crowd keep your ears to the ground you have to keep I'm totally gonna die. I'm totally just dead. How did I didn't die? Uh, how does this get back up? This is just... This is intense. I'm dead. I'm so dead. Oh my goodness. It just shows you. It just shows you like... I can try to make the slice and dice build work. I can try my very damnness hardest. And I can show you guys like what I can personally do. If I really just put my nose to the grindstone. But you gotta understand like this is actually a very miserable experience because when you know in the back of your head you can actually just have a better experience in general with this and you know that this is the experience you're currently having and you know that you shouldn't be having this kind of experience i don't know it just makes me think like i shouldn't even, this shouldn't even be happening the way this is all happening shouldn't even be happening i mean i guess if you just want to be very very spammy like spamming saber slash over and over and over yeah you could you could play this build is this build gonna be ever replacing the original build? No, no. If you if you, if you want to play a build and you like this build for whatever reason, you are more than welcome to play it. I guess. Um, in my personal opinion, I it, I as I w did so well for this build, but it's such a bad build. I feel like I did so much more when it comes to roll the bones, and it's just like I can't stress that enough. I can just I guess take a look at full damage, see just how much I've done for everything. I don't know what else I could do for Slice and Dice itself. I actually just don't know. Hey, that guy watches the videos. I kind of guess that he does. I kind of guess that he does. Because there's not that many people that play Outlaw. And that guy seems to know exactly what he's doing. Also, he let me get the stuns. So every time I, people just let me get the stuns off, it makes me think that maybe they know. Maybe they know me. Maybe they know who this, uh, who this pleb is. This plebarino that's running around. With good intentions in my heart, I cannot recommend anybody this build. I can only say that if you just if it's a deal breaker, you're just gonna be the unhappiest person in the world unless you play slice and dice, and you're just gonna be the most miserable person out there unless you're playing the hell out of slice and dice. I don't know what else to say. You shouldn't. You sh you should not be playing slice and dice. In my personal opinion, you should not. It's just so bad. Just so. Alright guys, I've been around playing Outlaw Rogue ever since it got released, and I've been a big proponent of Combat Rogue ever since Mr. Pandaria. So, I know that this video might make me come off salty, but it's just the experience that you have while playing Slice and Dice after you have a decent build, and then you try Slice and Dice, you just realize just how incompatible it is with the current Outlaw Rogue meta. The way Outlaw Rogues were designed, and I think this is the main issue that Blizzard is kind of having to go through, when they designed Outlaw Rogues, they designed it around Roll the Bones. Now, Outlaw Rogue might seem similar to Combat, and we might say, well, Slice and Dice work for Combat, why can't it work for Outlaw? They're two different specs. They're just very, very similar in terms of some of their abilities and ability names and energy costs, 
but those are two different specs they're very similar but they are very much different as well so that's why i think slice and dice just doesn't function in the past slice and dice uh, at least we'll let's say la last patch it only gave you 100 percent attack speed and attack speed isn't a high number we're not really hitting that hard with our mastery we're not really hitting that hard with our auto attacks a lot of our damage transferred into slice and dices and run throughs and maybe a little bit of blunderbuss and a little bit of uh between the eyes depending if you have the proper legendary for this but they just the spec is just not functional with slice and dice and maybe blizzard can do something i'll be fine if they did if they did something where every outlaw rogue started playing slice and dice if slice and dice was buffed to such lanes that you would never ever want to play roll the bones I actually personally would be okay with it. I do like the dynamic playstyle of Roll the Bones and the RNG doesn't really bother me, but I'll be completely okay if Blizzard were to buff the living hell out of Slice and Dice. So this video constitutes everything that I think about Slice and Dice, my personal thoughts, and in no good faith can I tell anybody and recommend the spec to anybody who wants to either push rating for PvP, play WoW seriously as an Alpha Rogue, or push progression in PvE. But if you aren't really, you know, that kind of guy or girl that cares about progression and it doesn't really bo bother you at all, you're more than welcome to do whatever you want. So don't let me stop you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about Slice and Dice and if you think you can make it functional and if you have a proper build that you want to share with me for me to maybe try again. If I ever get back at this to try again, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see all of you in the next one.